the calibration, the hue saturation luminance sliders, and the uh, split toning sliders. So those are like the three main ones that we'll go over. You can kind of achieve the same looks using curves, but it's more challenging. Becky Peckham's about to teach me how to use Adobe Lightroom because I listened to her podcast and she was like, if you use presets, you're a loser. Just kidding, you didn't say that. <laughs> You oh didn't God. say it like that, but that's how I took it, all right? And bottom line, bottom line is, I wanna learn how to use Lightroom better. Becky's gonna teach me, and hopefully you, in this video. Let's go. So you listen to the podcast. Chris was like, you just simultaneously offended everybody who makes presets and everybody who uses them, and I was like, <laughs> No, I wasn't offended at all. Your heart comes across with just like, look, you're a photographer, learn how to be a photographer. Just, mm -hmm. you know, any photographer wants to master the craft. And that's where I'm at. Sent you a photo, it's of Amber on her birthday of this year. Beautiful photo, by the way. Yeah, thank so you. So gorgeous. There's Not a photo. edited, nothing. Oh nothing. man, I'm so hyped right now. Like you have no idea how happy I am about what's going on right now. <laughs> So Becky's gonna take us through this, and I'm going to do my best to follow every single one of these directions, and we'll see if I end up with a photo that looked as good as hers, because that's the goal, and I hope that's, that's what we're trying to do here. <laughs> you got this, you got this. All right, here we go. I have faith, Cody. Okay, so we have Lightroom open. We have your photo here, beautiful photo of your wife. I'm gonna start out by saying that Cody has shot a really great photo here. It's kind of exposed for the highlights, so there's no point in the photo that's like really blown out except for maybe those little point light sources. So we're already starting with like a photo that's nicely lit, a photo that's properly exposed, and a photo that has some like nice warm colors in the background. So we're gonna give this photo kind of like a vibey, warm, kind of like sunsetty look. Not necessarily what you'd see on maybe our Instagram, because ours is definitely like deep and dark and sad, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but this is a happy photo, so we're gonna put a little happy. A little happy fairy dust in here. Usually what I'll do is just kind of start with the basic exposure, and then I'm like all over the friggin' map. So um, while I'm watching my histogram, I'm just gonna kind of adjust the exposure a little bit, and you can do this too, and it's kind of personal preference on how bright or contrasty you like your photo. Some people really like a high contrast look. Some people like blown out highlights. I prefer not to have as much blown out highlights. So I'm just gonna drop the highlights down and you can do that. Um, and then you're gonna take your shadow slider and just pull that up a little bit. And again, that's personal preference, but I just like to see a little bit of detail in the shadows here. Mm -hmm. So usually when I start, like I'll, I'm just starting with the basic exposure stuff. So I'm gonna drop my whites down a little tiny bit. Um, and then I'm going to crop this, if you're okay with me cropping your photo. Of course, I'm not a Jared Poland, though I do respect it. I crop photos all the time. I also crop photos, I may be uh, against presets, but I'm all about the cropping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna crop this to like an eight by 10 ratio because I'm assuming Instagram, we're usually posting our photos on Instagram, so I like to do an eight by 10 because that is the correct size. I'm just gonna kind of bring this up a little bit closer so we can see her lovely face. Mm -hmm. And I have a tendency to like a little bit of space above the head, but again, like that's kind of like personal preference and like how you wanna kind of crop your photo. Yeah. So sorry, I'm just gonna like adjust this a little tiny bit. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is if you're gonna be using any adjustment brushes, now is kind of the time where I like to put them in because once we start adding color to it, you kinda wanna see what things are gonna look like versus having to add the color and then go back and do these exposure adjustments. So we have a nice few like adjustment tools up here. So I really like to use these to add focus to the image almost, or like to make things pop. So usually what I'll do is for a portrait, um, I'll add like a radial filter. So I'll just kind of drag this to the size of her face. If I like mouse over this dot here, yeah, it kind of shows where the mask is affecting. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. We're gonna make sure that the adjustment is happening to the background and not to her face. Cause what we're gonna do is basically dark in the background um, so that her face is like kind of the brighter part in the image. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of play with that a little bit and just gonna drop that down a little tiny bit on the exposure. So that's like overall brightness. We're gonna drop that down. Um, the highlights here, you can take that down. You can see that you've preserved the highlights here. Um, it's kind of just like, coming down nicely versus like having this like stepping look or being like gray. 
mm -hmm. which is great. We'll start there and you're gonna come up here to your brush tool. I'm gonna make my brush tool a little bit bigger, kind of the size of her face. And I'm just gonna kind of mask in lightly. Sometimes what I like to do is just like boost this up just so I can see where I'm brushing. Actually, it's even better when you do it down. Um, just so you can see where you're brushing and then you can kind of fix that afterwards because we don't want her face to look like this, obviously. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. just like, it's showing you. Yeah, that's, that's a cool hack. I like that. Yeah, showing me kind of where I'm brushing because sometimes what will happen is when you're using adjustment brushes, like if your brush is too big or too wide, you'll start to get this like weird halo, especially if you're doing like really extreme exposure adjustments. And we mm -hmm. don't want that. We don't want the halo because it doesn't look very good. To reset your brush, you could just double click on the little arrow thing. So I'm just going to um, bring this up so you can see we're brightening her face a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come down to the shadows and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to pop that up and that is basically just brightening this side of her face ever so slightly. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little gradient adjustment um, this is again, like you don't have to do any of these things, but this is kind of what I like to do to add focus to the face for a portrait. I'm just going to drag up from the bottom and kind of just like pull it down. So it's very kind of subtle. And then I'm just going to drop this down a little tiny bit. So basically what that's doing is just kind of like darkening the lower half of the image. So your eyes aren't being brought into her shirt. It's mm -hmm. going to be brought into kind of her face. That's like a pretty good starting point for exposure. We'll probably go back and brighten her eyes and things after. We're gonna warm the photo up because it's kind of like a sunset photo. So I'm just gonna use the temperature slider, warm it up a little bit by just dragging that temperature slider to the right. So that looks kind of nice. So now we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. This is where I really like to play down here. Oh shoot, this is where I was so excited to get into. <laughs> so you're in the calibration pane. Yeah, we're in the calibration pane. So I find like the biggest differences come in through the calibration, the hue, saturation, luminance sliders, and the uh, split toning sliders. So those are like the three main ones that will go over. You can kind of achieve the same looks using curves, but it's more challenging. So these ones, it's just like a little bit easier. So if we like slide this around um, on the red slider here, you can kind of see how that's affecting. So obviously we don't want it to be pink and we don't want it to be green but if we just kind of play around with that so the skin tones look nice and a little bit neutral, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what I like to do. So on the green primary here again, this one's not making a whole lot of difference, but eh, it kind of is actually. So I'm gonna... Just minor tweaks it looks like. Like you, minor. Do, do you ever find yourself sliding them like the whole way? Sometimes depending on the image, I find that portraits sometimes are different because you want the skin tones to look natural or natural-ish. But mm -hmm. like sometimes for a landscape, I just give her on the color yeah, and it right, looks right, right. really dope. But again, like, yeah, portraits are a little more challenging because you still want them to look relatively human, human. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the blue slider here is actually making a massive difference. So I'm going to, if we drop that down like a little bit, maybe like minus, say go minus 16 for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I turn off the calibration, this is kind of how it looked before. Mm -hmm. And when I turn it back on, it's just like the very like slightest change in color. Mm -hmm. But it's a good starting point for us. Yep. So um, I'm going to actually come back up to my adjustment brushes. And I'm going to zoom right into her eyeballs. And I'm going to make a new brush. And this time we actually want the Iris Enhance yeah. preset. Um, you can do it from scratch, but sometimes those presets work really well. Um, so I'm just going to make my brush really small and I'm just going to paint inside her eye, the white part and the blue part. Her eyes are so friggin blue. Yeah. Look at her. Gorgeous. Okay. And we're going to zoom out a little bit. Cute. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back into my radial filter again and just drop that down a little tiny bit more and you want to make sure that the feather on this guy is pretty feathered because otherwise it's going to look really abrupt, which yeah. looks silly. Um, so if you had to make your adjustment like a little bit bigger, like that's fine too. So we're starting to get somewhere with this. So next we're going to come down to your HL... HL... 
This is kind of like a really fun time down here because this is when you can start like really manipulating the colors in your photos. The calibration like does a little bit, but the HSL is where I like to play in taking out blues and, and um, greens in my photos and manipulating also green tones to be more like darker and moodier versus like yellow. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the red. Again, this is kind of like, there's no set formula. It's not like set this to minus whatever. It's kind of like sliding it back and forth and seeing like what looks good. So obviously if we drop the reds down, her face is turning really pink. So we, it's like very small, like light adjustments here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna move the reds towards the orange a little bit. And we're gonna move the orange towards the yellow, so to the right. So we're about plus four there on the slider. Uh, moving down here to the yellow, there's not a lot of actually, it looks like a lot of yellow in the photo, but there's not really, it's mostly in the background. There's not much green there, not, not much blue, not much um, purple. That actually didn't do a whole lot. Sometimes this does a massive, massive difference. Mm -hmm. because the color just doesn't do a lot. This is one of my favorites. So we scroll down to split toning. Um, this is kind of where you're going to add some juiciness. All right. Juiciness. That's what, that's what we're here for. We're here for some juiciness. Okay. <laughs> First I'm going to actually, I'm only going to use the shadows because I find sometimes when you use the split toning on the highlights, it changes the skin tones in a weird way, unless you're going for like a different look. So I like to use the shadows portion of the split toning to just slightly change the look of the photo. Yeah. So I am just going to jack the saturation up for now, just so I can see what colors we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, on this slider here, you got all the hues. So I'm just going to kind of bring it all the way over here to like a pinky, um, pinky blue. Uh huh. And then you're gonna come up to your balance and this is gonna kind of tell Lightroom how much of the image is gonna to be toned in that color. So if you slide it to the right, it's gonna be less of the photo affected. And if you slide it to the left, it's gonna be more of the photo affected. We're only gonna have this affect the photo like a little tiny, tiny amount. So bring that balance way over to the right and it only affects the photo a bit. A bit, exactly. So that's when we're yeah. gonna bring our saturation down because it's gonna kind of tone that color down. I'm gonna drop that down to like 22. And then if we turn it off and on, it's just so slight. Yeah, and yeah. We, we can pull that balance back a little bit too if we wanna see a little more color. To affect again, more of it. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's it's like slightly manipulating all of these little settings until you get it to look right. There's no like one setting, like set this to 22, set this to whatever. It's yeah. kind of playing with it till you get a look that you really like. I have never understood what the split toning pain was. So thank you, Becky. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's basically tinting highlights and tinting shadows. Yeah. And yeah. I usually leave the highlights off and I just tint the shadows ever so slightly and it makes a difference to the point where I think sometimes you're like, what's going on in the photo and you don't really know how to get the look, but that's where it's coming from is the split yeah. toning. Yeah. Wow. I love it. Becky, thank you so much for taking us through this. You're welcome. Sorry it was such a show with my uh, Lightroom crashing and my uh, do it I over here it. and uh, I loved it. I'm planning here. on leaving literally all of that in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Becky. Yeah, you're welcome. Hopefully that was helpful. Very helpful. Awesome.